Welcome back to DPS. There are many legendary athletes who tried out coaching or executive roles after their playing careers. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out so well for them. On the flip side, there are many all-time great sports coaches who had previously flopped as professional athletes. They didn't have the skills to be stars, but they certainly made up for it with brilliant game planning. Here are 10 great sports coaches who were terrible athletes. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. Number 10, Bill Cower. The legendary Pittsburgh Steelers coach had a brief NFL career as a linebacker and special teams player for the Cleveland Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles. Cower, who went undrafted, played for the Browns in 1980 and 82, starting in a total of four games over that span. Cower later joined the Eagles in 1983, and he played two seasons there. He saw very limited playing time, though, and finished with zero career sacks. After a short-lived playing career, Cower became a coaching assistant for the Cleveland Browns. He served as the Kansas City Chiefs defensive coordinator from 1989 to 91 before the Steelers hired him as their head coach. Cower experienced a lot more success as a coach. He held the gig for 15 years from 1992 to 2006, posting a 149, 90, and 1 record. Cower turned the Steelers into a juggernaut, winning two AFC Championship games and Super Bowl 40. In all, Pittsburgh reached six AFC title games with Cower at the helm. The 92 AP Coach of the Year retired for the 2006 season. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2006. Number 9. George Carl Carl was one of the most successful basketball coaches of his era, but his overall playing career was hardly inspiring. He spent his entire five-year playing career with the San Antonio Spurs from 73 to 74 to 77 to 78. The Spurs were in the ABA for three of those seasons. In his five ABA slash NBA seasons, Carl averaged just 6.5 points, three assists, and 1.4 rebounds in 16.9 minutes per game. Carl got his first head coaching gig from the Cleveland Cavaliers in 84-85. He spent two seasons with both the Cavs and Golden State Warriors, eventually being fired by both clubs mid-season. Carl had far more success when he became the head coach of the Seattle Supersonics in 91-92. He turned them into a Western Conference powerhouse, leading the Sonics to the 1996 NBA Finals, where they bowed out to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. Carl also had successful coaching stints with the Milwaukee Bucks as well as the Denver Nuggets, where he coached for nine years. Most recently, he served as the Sacramento Kings head coach, but was fired for the 2015-16 season. The 2013 Coach of the Year certainly crafted quite the career for himself. His 1,175 wins placed Carl sixth all-time. That's more than Phil Jackson, Larry Brown, and Rick Edelman, by the way. Number 8. Tommy Lasorda Lasorda is a prime example that if at first you don't succeed as a baseball player, just take up managing. Lasorda's professional baseball career began with the Brooklyn Dodgers in 54. He appeared in four games as a pitcher, but Lasorda allowed five earned runs in nine total innings pitch, sporting an ERA of 5.00. Lasorda suited up for four games during the 55 season, but things went even more south. He posted a woeful 13.50 ERA, having allowed six earned runs in four innings. Lasorda also allowed six walks. Lasorda pitched one final season for the Dodgers in 1956. He posted a 6.15 ERA in 45.1 innings, pitched over 18 game appearances. Luckily for Lasorda, his baseball IQ and extremely charismatic personality led him straight to the managerial chair beginning in 76. Lasorda led the Dodgers to NL pennants in just his second and third seasons as a manager. They finally broke through and won the World Series in 81. The two-time manager of the year led the Dodgers to another World Championship in 88. Lasorda stayed on as manager of the Dodgers until 96. The Baseball Hall of Famer sits 22nd all-time in career managerial wins with 1,599. Number 7. Al Arbor Arbor spent 14 seasons in the NHL as a defenseman, beginning with the Detroit Red Wings of 53-54. He suited up for three original six teams, the Wings, Chicago Blackhawks, and Toronto Maple Leafs, as well as the St. Louis Blues. But Arbor was far from dominant throughout his playing days. He never topped 12 points in a single campaign, and Arbor finished with just 12 career goals and 70 points in 626 NHL games. Arbor relied more on his toughness and physicality than his skills as he racked up 611 career penalty minutes. Arbor began his coaching career for St. Louis in 7071, and after three seasons there, he moved on to the New York Islanders. It was on Long Island where Arbor created his hockey legacy. Led by superstars Mike Bossy and Dennis Potvin, the Islanders won four straight Stanley Cups from 80 to 83, becoming a new hockey dynasty. 
Aubrey spent 20 seasons as a bench boss for the Islanders. In a classy gesture, the team brought him back as coach for one game in the 2007-8 season, which the Isles won. This gave Arbor his 740th win with New York. Through the 2019-20 NHL season, the Hockey Hall of Fame coach was fifth all-time in coaching wins with 782. Number six, Arsene Wagner. The former Arsenal manager had a rather unsuccessful playing career before he took up managing. He played for four different soccer teams based in France throughout his senior career, Mutzig and FC Mulhouse in League Two, and ASPV Strasbourg and RC Strasbourg in League One. Wenger only tallied four goals in 67 games, but at least his managing career went a whole lot smoother. He managed AS Nancy and AS Monaco in France before landing with Nagoya Grampus of the J1 League in Japan. Wenger got his big break when Arsenal FC hired him in 96. The renowned tactician led Arsenal to EPL championships in 97-98, 2001-2, and 2003-4, as well as seven FA Cup victories. The team also went undefeated in 2003-4, earning them the moniker The Invincibles. Arsenal's struggles led to a sour end for Wenger and his illustrious tenure with the club. He ultimately resigned following the 2017-18, finishing with 476 career EPL wins. Much better as a manager than a player, wouldn't you say? Number 5. Bobby Cox Cox signed with the Los Angeles Dodgers in 59, but he never played a game for them. He also landed with the Atlanta Braves in 66, but Cox also failed to make it to the big leagues with them. He finally received an opportunity when he joined the New York Yankees in 68. In 135 games, the third baseman batted a mere .229 with 7 homers and 41 RBIs. He also struck out 85 times in 490 plate appearances. In 59, his final season as a pro, Cox batted just .215 with 2 homers and 17 RBIs in 85 games. Although he didn't pan out as a player, Cox went on to enjoy an illustrious career as a manager, beginning with the Atlanta Braves in 78. He stayed there until 81, before joining the Toronto Blue Jays where he managed from 82 to 85. He returned to Atlanta in 1990, leading the Braves to NL pennants in 91, 92, 95, 96, and 99. Cox and the Braves won the World Series in 95, further cementing his legacy as one of the all-time greats. He last managed the Braves in 2010 before retiring. Cox currently sits fourth all-time in managerial wins with 2,504. Number 4. Chuck Knoll Before he became the Pittsburgh Steelers head coach, Knoll played guard and linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. He first joined the club in 53, and he was a member of the 54 and 55 NFL championship teams. Knoll played with the Browns up until 59 before joining the LA-San Diego Chargers as their defensive line coach in 60. No stayed with the Chargers until 1965 before moving on to a defensive coordinator role for the Baltimore Colts. The Steelers hired Noel to become their new head coach in 69, and the rest is history. He turned this long struggling franchise into one of the NFL's best, forming the legendary Steel Curtain defense while building up an offensive juggernaut around quarterback Terry Bradshaw. Noel led the Steelers to four Super Bowl championships in the 70s, making them the first true dynasty in the Super Bowl era. He coached the Steelers until 91, finishing with 193 career wins. Number 3. Tony La Russa If it weren't for a nagging shoulder injury that hampered him throughout his career, perhaps Tony could have been a solid player. He debuted for the Kansas City Athletics in the 63 season, but was stuck in the minors for the next five years. He didn't return to the majors until 68. He played 132 games, 122 of them coming with the Oakland Athletics. He also stood up for the Atlanta Braves and the Chicago Cubs, batting .199 for his career with zero homers and just seven RBI. Tony began his managerial career with the Chicago White Sox, which spanned from 79 to 86. He moved to managing the Athletics, leading to a World Series championship in 89. The four-time manager of the year enjoyed his greatest tenure with the St. Louis Cardinals, which spanned from 96 to 2011. The Russo led St. Louis to three NL pennants plus World Series championships in 2006 and 2011. He sits third all-time in managerial wins with 2,728. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2014. Number 2. Joel Quinneville He is a lock for the Hockey Hall of Fame as a coach. He spent 13 seasons as a defenseman in the NHL, beginning with the Toronto Maple Leafs in 78-79. He also played for the Colorado Rockies, Hartford Whalers, New Jersey Devils, and Washington Capitals. He finished with 54 goals and 190 points in 803 career NHL games. He never topped 34 points in a season, and he only hit 20-plus points three times. Like Arbor, he was more useful as a tough guy, racking up 705 career penalty minutes. But as a coach? Oh, mama. What a career it's been for Coach Q. He coached juggernaut teams in St. Louis, Colorado, and Chicago, turning the long-time struggling Blackhawks into a dynasty. 
He left in the Stanley Cup championships in 2010, 13, and 15. Along with three Stanley Cups, he also won the Jack Adams Award as the Coach of the Year in 2000. He's only one of two coaches with over 900 career wins. It's unlikely that Joel will catch Scotty Bowman for the most catching wins at 1,244, but it's hard to imagine anybody catching Coach Q for second on the all-time list. And number one, Pat Riley. Now, Riley did win an NBA championship as a player with the Los Angeles Lakers in 72, but otherwise a former shooting guard and small forward wasn't somebody you would call a game changer. Riley played three seasons with the San Diego Rockets, part of six seasons with the Lakers, and one season with the Phoenix Suns. He averaged just 7.4 points, 1.7 assists, and 1.6 rebounds per game in his career. After his playing career, Riley took over as head coach for the Showtime Los Angeles Lakers, led by Magic Johnson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Riley led the Lakers to NBA championships in 82, 85, 87, and 88. Riley also coached the New York Knicks and Miami Heat, leading the latter club to an NBA championship in 2006. And that marked ring number five for Coach Riley. He added rings as an executive for the LeBron James-led Heat in 2012 and 13 too. Riley sits fifth all-time in coaching wins with 1,210. He himself didn't dominate on the court, but Riley coached teams sure did. What other great head coaches were terrible as players? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, go down there and hit that subscribe button. If you like the video and like the video, we'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, tune into TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll see you next time.